Have you seen this innovative method to derive the quadratic formula? We're not going to complete the square, we're going to square the completion. And it's going to be super beautiful and easy to understand. So here we have the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c. We want a formula for x in terms of a, b and c. And we're going to derive it as follows using the following trick. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace each x by x plus k, where k is yet to be determined. Okay, so here we're going to have a times x plus k squared plus b times x plus k plus c is equal to zero. Okay, now, first of all, before we get further, notice that if you have a solution to this equation, x, and you add k to it, then you'll have a solution to this equation. That's just straightforward because by definition here, x plus k is going to be a solution here, right? So once we've solved this equation, we just add k to the solution to get the solution to the first equation. So we just need to solve this equation here, okay? That's what we need to do. Now what we're going to do is we're going to expand this out. We haven't yet said what k is, okay? k is some new kind of variable in some sense we're introducing, but what we're going to do is we're going to expand out this whole thing. So we're going to get ax squared plus 2kx using the binomial theorem plus k squared plus bx plus bk plus c. That's going to equal to zero. Now let's collect like terms. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this quadratic into what's called a depressed quadratic. And this is going to be super beautiful. We're going to get rid of the x coefficient. And of course, if the x isn't here, this becomes easy to solve. It's just something squared is equal to something. Take the square root and solve it. So what we're going to get is we're going to collect all the like terms. So we're going to have ax squared. What are the x terms here? You're going to get 2kax and bx, right? So we're going to get 2ka plus b times x. And then what are all the constant coefficients? You're going to have a times k squared plus bk plus c. Okay, so we're going to get ak squared plus bk plus c, and that is going to equal to zero. As I said, we want to choose a k so that this becomes easy to solve. And the k we're going to choose is so that this coefficient is zero, so we get rid of the x coefficient and make it a very simple quadratic, what we can call a depressed quadratic. There are things called depressed cubics, and this is a method for solving cubic equations actually. But here we have Choosing k so that 2k a plus b is zero. So how do we do that? So choose k, I'm gonna write this up top. Choose k such that um, 2k a plus b is equal to zero. And if we solve for k here, we're just gonna get k is minus b over 2a. Okay, so if k is minus b over 2a, then we're going to have the right k so that this coefficient is going to be zero. And we're just gonna have ax squared plus ak squared plus bk plus c is zero. And remember k is essentially, once you've solved for k, we've chosen k to be minus b over 2a, it's a constant. So we're getting basically something x squared is equal to a const negative of the constant, which we can solve. Let's now solve for x. So we know that we've chosen k so that the x coefficient is zero. So now we can say ax squared plus ak squared plus bk plus c is equal to zero. So let's write that out. So we're gonna get ax squared plus, um, so we can put that to the other side. We can say this is going to be minus of ak squared minus bk minus c. So if we divide both sides by a, we're going to get x squared is equal to minus k squared minus b over a times k minus c over a. Okay, and now we can solve for x. You know, we just have to say that x is the plus or minus of the square root of this number. And there could be, it could be a negative number, so then it's going to have complex solutions. But we need to plug in our k's minus b over 2a, so we get all our solutions in terms of a, b, and c. But that's easy enough to do. So here we can just write this out as, so therefore x is going to equal to plus or minus the square root of minus k squared. So k is minus b over 2a, so k squared is b squared over 4a squared. So we're going to get minus b squared over 4a squared, um, then minus b over a times k. So k is minus b over 2a times minus b over a is going to be b squared over 2a squared. So we're going to get plus b squared over 2a squared minus c over a. Okay, so now we can, I'm just going to make all the denominators common. So I'm going to make all the denominators 4a squared. So then what's going to happen is I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of minus b squared. Um, we're going to double, we're going to multiply top and bottom of b squared over 2a squared by 2. So it's going to be minus b squared plus 2b squared. And then to make here a denominator of 4a squared, we have to multiply by 4a top and bottom. So it's going to be minus 4ac, and you can sort of see the quadratic formula taking shape. So this is now going to be plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by the square root of 4a squared, which is 2a. 
Okay, 2a, the whole squared is 4a squared. So that looks a lot like the quadratic formula, except that the quadratic formula has an extra term on the numerator in minus b. So what's going on there? The answer to that question is remember that the solutions to this equation, which is what we've just solved, we have to add k to it to get a solution to the first equation, and k is minus b over 2a. So once we've added minus b over 2a to this, which I'm just going to do right now, we're then going to get the solution to the original quadratic equation that we had. It's going to be, therefore, x is going to be k plus that. Okay, so k is minus b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, which we can now make a common denominator and say minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And that solves the quadratic formula. And what I encourage you to do is check out my video solving the cubic formula. So in the cubic formula, when you have a cubic equation, completing the square, completing the cube is a lot less clear, okay? It took a lot of time for humanity to discover that, but the first step people did was convert the cubic to a depressed cubic by a similar trick to what we did here to get rid of the x squared coefficient in that case. So one less than the highest degree coefficient. In this case, we got rid of the x coefficient by translating x. It's a change of variable. It's a very common trick in math. I want to introduce you to it. It's not taught often in quadratic formula theory. You know, typically people teach you to complete the square, but this this is another cool trick that also works. It's going to pop up on the screen right here and it's going to be a dissection of how to solve the cubic and this took hundreds of years for humanity to do. So check that out. I'll see you in that video. I wish you all the best. I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing year ahead and I'm super excited to see you in that video.